This unique cancer requires very little amount of effort to raise your protection against it up to 90%. It is as easy as it gets in cancer prevention, yet many people either forget or don't know about this protection, so the price they may have to pay later on could be devastating. Can you guess which cancer type is 90% preventable with just a few injections? Please write your guesses in the comment section below. This cancer type is cervical cancer. The few injections are vaccinations against human papillomavirus, also known as HPV. There are hundreds of HPV types, but only some of them cause cervical cancer. The protection from this vaccination is against only the cancer-causing HPV types that lead to 90% of the cervical cancer diagnosis. If you're a man watching this video, please stay with me through its end. When it comes to cervical cancer prevention, it takes two to tango. Even though only women can receive a cervical cancer diagnosis, it is both men and women who contribute to spreading human papilloma virus that can potentially cause cervical cancer. Men are particularly dangerous. At this time, there is no test that can detect the presence of HPV that can cause cervical cancer in men. So many men could be spreading HPV to unsuspecting partners without being aware that they could be raising their risk for receiving a cervical cancer diagnosis down the road. So the way to raise protection against cervical cancer is for both men and women to do their part in getting vaccinated against the HPV types that can potentially cause cervical cancer. Now I will focus on the importance of your conversation with your doctor about why HPV vaccination could be appropriate for your family. Later, I will talk about the right time and the best time to receive this vaccination for optimal results. Why is it important to raise your protection against cervical cancer? Because you can. It's at your fingertips. It's a low-hanging fruit. Grab it, run with it. It is so rare in cancer prevention to be as easy as a couple of injections to raise protection against a type of cancer up to 90%. This is as easy as it gets and there are no excuses. Protect yourself and your loved ones from cervical cancer because you can. The second reason is because cervical cancer can sneak up on you without any symptoms. And when it does, it may be too late. Some HPV types show up in the form of warts. However, the cancer-causing HPV does not show in any way. The cancer-causing HPV causes changes on a cellular level of the cervix. So they can be detected only using a microscope. As I mentioned earlier, there are no tests that can detect in a man the presence of HPV that can cause cervical cancer. So any man could be spreading it without knowing that he's actually causing damage to his partners. So protect yourself against HPV and your partner from HPV and cervical cancer. So you won't have to live in suspense. Do you have it? Do you not? Third, the consequences of getting cervical cancer could be devastating. Sometimes the only effective solution is a surgery that removes the cervix and makes the woman unable to get pregnant. So imagine that this woman would have gone through the trauma of a cancer diagnosis would have gone through the trauma of an invasive procedure, would have gone through the trauma of facing infertility. This is such a difficult, devastating experience, not only for the woman, but also for her partner and her family. So it is important to raise your protection against cervical cancer so you have a peace of mind that you can grow your family when you want to. The fourth reason 
is that the HPV vaccine raises your immunity against other types of cancers, not just cervical cancer. HPV is known to cause also penile cancer, anal cancer, vulvar cancer, vaginal cancer, mouth cancer and throat cancer. I hope with these four reasons, you have enough motivation to schedule an appointment with your doctor and discuss how you can best protect your family against cervical cancer and these other cancers. Now let's talk about the second point in this video, the timing of the HPV vaccination. There is the right time and there is the best time. Right now, my 11-year-old daughter is receiving her HPV vaccination. I am receiving mine. And we are several decades apart in age. So how come it is the right time for both of us? The right time to get the vaccine is between 9 and 45. The best time to receive the HPV vaccination is when you are in your preteens between 9 and 12 years old. Studies on HPV vaccination in different age groups show that this population has the best immune response to the vaccine and that is why they only require two injections to reach their maximum protection. For children, the right time to receive the HPV vaccination is before they begin exploration of sexual intimacy of any sort. As you know, the HPV infection is transmitted very easily. It does not require a penetrative sexual intercourse. It takes only skin-to-skin -skin contact with an area of the body that is already infected with HPV to transmit the disease to the other partner. So for us as parents, it is very important to observe our children's behavior. If we miss the opportunity to have them vaccinated until the age of 12, we have to make sure that we do vaccinate them before they begin their exploration of sexual intimacy. So as soon as you detect that your child is starting to be interested in dating, you need to begin the process of HPV vaccination. I'm calling it a process because it does require two to three injections over the course of six to 12 months, depending on the age. So all the doses of the HPV vaccination need to be already administered before your child's first kiss or experience of intimacy. For adults, the timing of the HPV vaccination depends on their physical condition and relationship status. So if you don't have cervical cancer and if you don't have the HPV infection, you have everything to gain from receiving the HPV vaccination at any age until the age of 45. So the first step is to take your pap smear test to confirm if you don't have cervical cancer and take your HPV test to confirm that you don't have an HPV infection that can cause cancer. If you do have one or several of the nine HPV types causing cancer against which the vaccine can protect you, then it still makes sense to receive the vaccine to protect you from the remaining few. Because even if not 90%, your protection will raise to some degree. And let's remember that it takes a single type of HPV that causes cancer for someone to get the bad news. Your relationship status is another factor to consider before you make the decision to take the HPV vaccination. If you have just finished a monogamous relationship and you're getting ready to date again, then it makes a lot of sense to take the HPV vaccine before you start dating. It takes six months and three injections before you can consider yourself vaccinated and protected against the nine HPV types causing cervical cancer. The HPV vaccination raises women's protection against cervical cancer up to 90%. So what about the other 10%? 
women have to remain committed to their annual pap smear testing to take care of this 10% protection. And if you happen to have a disease that weakens your immune system, if you're a smoker, this puts you at a higher risk of seeing an HPV infection evolve into cervical cancer. So you need to be very committed, very dedicated to your pap smear testing. If you found the information in this video useful, please click the like button, comment below, share the video with your friends and subscribe to this channel. I will see you in the next video. Until then, talk with your doctor how you can protect your family against cervical cancer with the HPV vaccine, worry less and live more.